I picked up this Sony boombox from the trash, a model CFDS350. If I hit the volume, it doesn't give any sound. The volume indicator will show up, but it's completely silent. I looked up the service manual, which is available online. I found out that the amplifier is run on a chip BA5417, like this one. So these are obsolete. They were made originally by ROM semiconductors. Now they are obsolete, but somebody makes them aftermarket in China and you can buy them one for about two bucks or five for 350. I went ahead to order five of them and I'm glad I did uh, because some of them are really badly made. They look like uh, they are defective uh, out of the box. Uh, like this one, you see the crooked pin, but if I try to straighten the pin, I notice that it moves just like that. So this one is garbage. One interesting thing I notice in this particular boombox is that the cone of the speaker is kind of reverse. Let me light a flashlight here and show you. Uh, you see that's the shape of the cone and there is a little horn at the end of it. So it's actually kind of uh, inside out. People are very happy with the sound of it, so I'm going to try to fix it and then test it out. All these screws are Phillips number one. There are two of them deep in the corners here, in both sides of the cassette. But the two of them, again very deep, go right here. Two on this side and two on the other side. One right here. And I may have to remove the antenna. Now in the back, once you remove the battery cover, you have one, where's my thumb here, one in the middle, and one at the very end. Now once I remove the top section, I can see the power amplifier board and the power supply board, which is this part right here. And this is the culprit, I think. I haven't tested it. I'm kind of guessing that this is a bad boy that needs to be replaced. The main board is held by a couple of screws, just two screws, one here and one there. The heat sink is made of steel, it's just a piece of steel, so I'm going to put some aluminum uh, to make a little better heat dissipation. The original chip has been removed. I also removed the heat sink, which is only held by twisted tabs still, so I'm going to now put in its place a new chip and see if it works. I'm going to modify it and add this little heat sink that's from some uh, TV set, uh, but it's aluminum, it's got nice area for heat dissipation. I hope everything will fit. This will go right here on the board. I had to burn it down a little bit because of the board from the CD. That's It was like almost touching, so I pushed it down a little bit. So I'm going to put everything together, test it out, and uh, hold my fingers crossed. Very unfortunate, the replacement of the chip didn't bring back the sound. So I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. I looked at the schematic and pin number 8, the center pin of the chip, is for standby, turning off the chip for the standby. So I'm going to check the voltage. It should be the full 10 volts on that pin. And the only way to have everything put together, assembled together, and access to that pin was to run a solder and magnet wire. One is to the ground, one is to pin number eight. And when I hit the power button, the voltage should go to 10 to the full supply. And so it does. So the chip is being turned on and off properly but there is no audio, no sound. I'm going to check one more thing. There is a chip, an uh, electronic volume control chip, so maybe the chip is failed. Uh, I'm going to open up again and just make the final test. This chip, the uh, IC302, and this is PT2257, 
is an electronic volume control. And what I did was short the left channel input and output pins number 7 and 8. And now I'm going to turn it on and see one channel should be full blast if the pit, this chip is the culprit. So I'm going to make a final test, otherwise I'll just chuck the whole thing in back into garbage. Now this is another test, the final, and if this chip was the culprit then we should have one channel playing full blast. So let's fire it up, CD, and uh, I don't want to blow up the speakers so I'm going to turn it off as soon as as soon as we hear a sound, so we'll see. Yeah, it is the chip. Now instead of the speakers, I plugged in headphones and as track number two, these are some kind of Christmas carols CD that was in the boombox, but this will play softly from the beginning, so let's just test it. And you can hear it. Yeah, so it's just one channel right now because I only shorted one channel. But this is the problem. It's that chip. So it wasn't the power amplifier, it wasn't anything else, but it was the electronic volume chip. Before I order new chip, the volume control chip, I'm going to check the voltage on the, the supply pin, which is pin number six and I soldered a little piece of magnet while you have to put everything together. This is the only way I can uh, make the measurements. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to reconnect everything and uh, do a proper testing. So this magnet wire will let me know if the pin gets proper voltage. If it does then I order new. Uh, it, if it doesn't I'll look for uh, trouble why the chip does not get the proper voltage. Now this is interesting. The chip should have 5.3 volts according to the service manual and it gets nothing. Now if I power off the boombox it goes down to zero. Uh, but this is really interesting. Let's see again. So I'm going to power it up and there is nothing. There is absolutely nothing. Well, I'm going to check the circuitry, see why the chip doesn't get the proper voltage. The chip may be okay, uh, but the uh, circuitry to supply voltage to it may be uh, deficient. I'm gonna check it out. Now, looking at the schematic from the service manual, pin number 6, there should be 5.3 volts power supply, which comes from here. It's got a nice filtration, uh, probably to avoid any humming. So you've got three smaller cups and one uh, 200, uh, 2200 uh, microfarads and a 100 ohm resistor. So what I'm going to do now is check these three elements. Uh, these cups, the low voltage, high capacity cups, they, they often go bad. So I'm going to check this one, test it, see the resistor is okay and what voltage appears on this side. This voltage 6.6 .6, the volts should be right here at this side of the resistor and this should be 5.3 right here. Well, this is interesting. I still have the two wires connected, one to ground, one to pin number 6, the voltage uh, supply and when I connected the ohmmeter I get four arms. So this looks like either there is a short in the chip or one of the three capacitors. But I'm pretty sure that we have, I have it narrowed down. So, in, and I kind of think that this will be the large electrolytic uh, capacitor shorted. So I'm going to check it out. Well, after so much time spent and a replacement of the power amp, I found the culprit, and that's the big capacitor, this uh, 2200 micro, 10 volts. This, and between the other pin and this pin, there is a 3 ohm resistance. So I'm going to remove it, replace it with another 
capacitor. On the top side of the board, it, this is this one here. That's the big guy that needs to be removed and replaced. Got some goo on this side. So here is the capacitor, 3.3 ohms, and this is the guy right here. So I'm going to find the new cap, uh, put in place of the old one, and the boombox will be like brand new. I'm going to use a cap from old TV board, and there is one 2200 micro right here. And it's a Samson, which is not the best company. However, this one is rated 25 volts, which should be more than enough and it will be perfect for the boombox. This is the Samson 2200 microfast, 25 volts, should be perfect. Okay, the capacitor is soldered in, it's right here. I'm going to put it together and test it. When you work on this boombox, just be careful with the ribbon cables because they are very fragile, easy to rip apart. So take your time, be patient and do a nice job. This is the final test. I didn't put the screws, just put everything together, put a CD and I'm going to fire it up. Uh, okay, that's all. It's reading the CD. If there is a sound, we are good. Yep, there's a sound. This is perfect. So let's go to the next track. Well, it's working great. I started the repair by replacing this chip, which is BA5417. And that chip is the power amplifier and this it is an obsolete chip however i did see a lot of them hundreds of them being sold on ebay i replaced the chip and there was no sound so i checked pin number eight which is the standby whether this gets voltage when i turn on the boombox and it does get 10 volts so this was not a problem then i traced the input back to the volume control chip which is this one right here I shorted it, uh, this is line in, uh, line out, left. I put a drop of solder across these two and the sound just blasted because it wasn't limited in any way. Uh, so it worked. So I knew that the signal is getting here and not getting out of this chip. So I thought it's either the chip bad or the chip doesn't get voltage. So this is 5.3 volts, it should be on pin number six which is the vdd the supply and when i measured uh, this one which was kind of a challenge so i had to solder a piece of magnet wire run it outside and measure it after putting everything together so when i measured the voltage it was close to zero so i traced the voltage supply back and then i noticed that this 100 ohm resistor does get a voltage on the input it doesn't get anything on output so i thought it's either the chip shorted out or one of the three capacitors now this one is 2200 micro 10 volts and these are notorious the low voltage high capacity uh, caps are notorious for going bad prematurely so i tested it I removed it from the board and this was 3.3 ohms, so I found another cup and replaced it. And now it works. If you have the CFD S350 and no volume at all, then you may actually open it up and check the capacitor, which may be the culprit. So this is C353. It's a large capacitor. You can see it right away upon opening, removing the CD assembly. Well, thank you for watching. Give a thumbs up if you liked it.